Day. Hey, Madhu. Praise the Lord. <clears throat> Chandra, <clears throat> excuse me. <clears throat> Chandra, praise the Lord. How are you both of you doing in India? Happy independence to you all in India. Madhu, God bless you. God bless you. Chandra, 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 God bless you. God bless you. Prophet Ezekiel, wonderful work on the street. You don't have an NGO, you have a church. God bless you. <laughs> and uh, I see that you're trying to con me so that you don't uh, do your assignment. I got you already. <laughs> uh, Kumari, Kumari, God bless you. Kumari, God bless you. God bless you. Praise the Lord to you. God bless you. Nana, Nana, yeah, God bless you. Please do me a favor. Just tag your friends, your loved ones, even your enemies, the ones you know. Tag them, all right? They will love you for it. Tag them, share this broadcast. Um, <clears throat> because we'll be talking, we're going to be talking about somebody that um, the world needs. Everybody needs it. They need him. Bible says that the world don't know him, so we are to introduce him to the world. And so please do me this favor and share this broadcast. Tag your loved ones and everybody and uh, let them be blessed even as we talk about the Holy Spirit. The one and only, the gift God gave to man after the cross after the cross oh what a perfect gift what a good promise what a wonderful promise that you and i have today that for that reason we come into a time of help all right in this dispensation of grace let's have a word of prayer our heavenly father we are thanking you this morning we are giving you all the glory and all the praise we are so grateful to you for giving us another day the same spirit that lifted Christ from the dead dwells in our mortal bodies and that has also lifted us up from our sleep, from our sleep this morning. We did not even know where we were, just tossing and turning on the bird and on the bed and enjoying the sleep. <clears throat> Scripture tells us that, Lord, you give a good sleep to them that you love. You've blessed us with one and we are grateful. Holy Spirit, all of you and nothing of me sit and take your dirty hands of god's people's ears and let them hear the word of god that says the lord and uh, may you be blessed even as you stand in and stay with me in this short time of bringing you an insp inspiring word to inspire your christian life and um and uh, energize you and bring you up to that place of understanding so you cannot be destroyed all right scripture says they that have understanding can't be destroyed whatever you don't know cannot bless you are you listening and so i salute all of you in jesus name and uh very important very very important all right bishop's wife maslin god bless you mcdonald god bless you for all of you coming on this platform this is wonderful do me a favor again please tag your friends share to your you know share this uh, broadcast right now tell somebody call them that faith moment or um it's live faith moment it's live a time where 
inspiring word of God is brought to you to bring you an information uh, to revive your understanding about the word of God and what God expects you and I to know so that we cannot be destroyed. Because, beloved, ignorance is a very, very diabolical disease, a weapon and tool of the devil. Are you listening to me? We are to know everything. We are to know everything. Not somebody know it. You need to know. You need to. Have you? I believe you've heard this before that the truth you know shall set you free. The truth you know. All right. So you must know. You must know. You got to dig. The people of God who have understanding could not be destroyed. If you don't even have an understanding of who God is. See, the, the, the scripture says that Abraham, I mean uh, Moses, Moses had one-on-one -on -one with God. He knew God. But the children of Israel, they knew of God. Knowing of something and knowing that thing is two different things. And so, beloved, we, we have to know him. You got to know him. You got to know who God is and and what what you know what he he stands for. What he wants you to have. What he wants you to know. What we don't know is being used against us for so long, for too long. Our ignorance has caused us a lot of things, beloved. I am speaking from my personal you know um, chapter of my book that. My ignorance has cost me a lot. Ignorance. I mean, when you think you are doing something, oh, this is this is what God expects. This is what this is so good and all that. No, beloved, it, it's not. You have to have a clear understanding of what you are doing and what you are standing for. Are you listening to me? Most of the time, even the things that we want to do or give to God, God hasn't asked us to do that. Remember, He asked David. David was so zealous, he wanted to build a temple for God. God asked him, did I ask you to do that? All right, so we have to even know what we ought to do. See, that is all God wants to do is to let us know, even in, in this dispensation, forget about our, 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 uh, the old, which you and I, even now, if we want to leave that old dispensation in the now, we still cannot fulfill that old dispensation that old covenant we couldn't do it and so he he i mean we thank god we thank him for jesus now he has brought us into this new dispensation this new covenant all right so yes you can call yourself um um a new testament christian while while because jesus has end the old and brought us into the new now don't get distant ideas that well therefore you don't have to do anything of the old no you don't live in the old you live in the now you can make reference of the old are you listening to me you make reference of the old but you are in the now this is listen this is this is the dispensation of nanaya this is not the dispensation of abraham or sarah this is the dispensation of madu this is the dispensation of ezekiel this is your dispensation. This is not the dispensation of the old. So you need to know what is God doing with you in this time. What is God expecting of you in this dispensation? Most of us, we, you know, because of the, of the teachings that we had, we've been living in the now. I mean, we li we're living the old in the now. And beloved, Scripture tells you and I that you cannot put a brand new wine in an old jar it will not work it doesn't are you listening so we are new testament christians after the cross what is here and most of most of us don't even understand that and so we are living that old okay old covenant that we could not even keep now if you think that you can keep it well let me ask you do you think you can keep even just the ten commandment just the 10. You can't keep it. Don't lie to yourself. You can't. Don't. All right? And so we, we, we need to thank God for what Jesus did for us, ended the old for us, and brought us into, you know, this new phase of the covenant where God is concerned. So we need to have that understanding. If we don't have this understanding, we'll be jumping back and forth. The things that 
that was 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 in in the past it may not even work for you now you are living and most of the time listen most of this thing here you need to understand that that covenant was even pretty much for the israelites it wasn't even for you and i the gentiles who were not even part of the covenant it wasn't even meant for us and so this is the understanding of the word that we've not been taught well we've not been taught well and so we need to have this understanding and therefore live in this dispensation with a good understanding of God's word and know this is what fits for us. This is us according to what God has put in place concerning God and man. I, are you following what I'm saying? So we thank him. Now, after Jesus has done all that for us and brought us into this dispensation, now a promise was given. Now, in that old dispensation, promise was given through Abraham. With this dispensation, a promise is given through the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit was promised for you and I to, to receive him and he will help us in every area of our lives. So we And now the Holy Spirit is here. So why are we not engaging the Holy Spirit? Because we don't know him and we haven't understood who he is. We've heard of him, the Holy Spirit. That, oh, he appeared on the day of Pentecost. But that was in the new dispensation after the cross. After the cross. In this dispensation, which you and I are still living. And Jesus says that when he comes, he will dwell with you and be in you forever. So the Holy Spirit has not finished his work and he's still here. And that is where you and I must have that understanding and know that the Holy Spirit... It's not only for Sundays. Because we've not been taught well, we think the Holy Spirit is only for Sundays. So we go to church and we are, we are looking very, very sentimentally Christian and the Holy Spirit and, you know, the choir will sing, you know, the, some harmonious songs and we get, you know, our goosebumps on our body and it's like, oh, glory. No, 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 no. The Holy Spirit is with us every moment every hour every second and so when you have that understanding you are walking and talking and getting all the help you need from and with the holy spirit in every area of your life and i'm talking i've said this thing here your 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 marriage your education your family life your finances whatever holy spirit is with you allison god bless you the holy spirit is with you forever now it is your responsibility and understanding this that oh the holy spirit is here to help me in every area of my life when you have that understanding then you begin to how do you walk scripture says that how do two people walk together unless they first agree how do you walk with the holy spirit if you don't know him how do you talk to the Holy Spirit if you don't know Him? How do you get the help of the Holy Spirit if you don't know Him? You must know the Holy Spirit, beloved. And we see that it is so important for you and I to first of all understand this. And then we'll be able to then see the difference of the, the, the work of the Holy Spirit and that of any other spirit. Because we have other spirits as well imitating the, 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 the move and the work of the Holy Spirit. Are you listening? And so we have to be very careful, beloved. A Christian without the Holy Spirit, you are just a mere Christian. There's no authority or no power in you. A, a Christian... Now, why do I say you're a Christian? You have accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior. That's fine. But it shouldn't stop there. Remember... John, the, the, the Baptist, he, he affirmed and confirmed that he is baptizing now with water. But who will come after him referring to Jesus? Jesus will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. So the, after the baptism of, the Holy, of, the, of, uh, for the, of water for repentance, you need to be positioning yourself to receive the Holy Spirit. So, Christians, as Christian, our authority, our uh, power 
is the Holy Spirit. Without the Holy Spirit, beloved, we are just mere Christians. And this is why the enemy, the devil, Satan, is having a field day dealing with us. You, you see that he doesn't bother himself with the unbelievers, those who are in his hands already. But he's always coming to you and tormenting you and because he uses your ignorance against you. He uses your ignorance. And if he's able to get a little fear in you, then you run all over the place calling, I mean, people who are also using other spirits, okay, and acting like they are, they are, they are using the spirit of God to operate for whatever personal gains they, they, are, they are having. Are you getting this? And so we even come to the play, um, a scripture now where scripture tells us in the book of John, the revelator, that test all spirits. Why would John says test all spirits? Because the Holy Spirit is not known to even some believers. No. To some believers, you don't even know who the Holy Spirit is. Are you listening to me? You don't. And so you 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 are you are living a life where you think you are hearing about the Holy Spirit, you are talking, you know, but you don't know him. You don't know him. The children of Israel knew of God, but Moses met with him one on one. Do you have one on one relationship with the Holy Spirit? Do you? And beloved, you are Christian, and if you don't have that, you better fall in line, come in alignment immediately. And so, all throughout the week, we've been I've been teaching you the series of what I I I, I title: "Be careful of the Holy Spirit." Why do you have to be careful of the Holy Spirit? Because the Holy Spirit does not take nonsense. And we see that gave you some scriptures that prove to you and show you that some people thought that they could they could just make fun of the holy spirit some some saw the attraction of the holy spirit but the demonstration of the power of the holy spirit and they even thought that they could use money to buy the holy spirit you know in whom the holy spirit was operating we saw all that and their lives was was not the same there, there are some, a husband and wife yesterday, I, I, I spoke to you about Ananias and Sapphira in the book of Acts, that they thought that they were lying to men. They didn't know they were lying to the Holy Spirit, and they died. Be, be careful about the Holy Spirit, because, see, if you have not come to understand and to know who He is, you think you'll be messing up with some things and getting away with My beloved, I am telling you, I have come to realize and believe in that some of the things that we do in the name of God, because the Holy Spirit now is the one representing Jesus here. And so whatever we are doing that we think that, oh, in the name of God, the Holy Spirit is the, is the one taking care of, uh, I mean, handling stuff right now. And because he's not somebody to mess up with, he's dealing with you and you don't even know. And then we come to even the church the church where you know the holy spirit have left some of the areas some of the churches we come to church where the holy spirit has left we come to families where the holy spirit has left we come to um, um uh, relationships where the holy spirit has left we come to i mean just put it all name it all the holy spirit has left but yet we are acting because we are so good with systems we are so good with using our talents like church, you know. And there's a lot of talents in church, a lot of talents. Some people can sing, you think that they just drop down from heaven. There are some angelic voices and all that. They are talents. But if you if you if you if you are walking with the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit will tell you this is just a talent. This is not of me. You can hear some choir singing very, very good, but there's no there's no anointing. Very good. You will clap for them after they finish singing, but there's no anointing. You may hear a, a, a teaching or a preaching, you know, like I'm doing right now. If there's no whole, the whole spirit is not in there. Listen, what makes the difference? It's not about how eloquent one may sound. It's not. But it's 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 the demonstration and the power of the Holy Spirit. Are you listening? And so this is very important and 
I want you to understand this. I want you to understand it. And if we don't understand this, then the enemy takes advantage over us. Paul um, said the other day that now we are not ignorant lest Satan takes advantage over us. We cannot be ignorant anymore. We cannot. Beloved, we cannot. Are you listening to me? When it comes to the things of God, it's not about emotions. I have, I, I, you know, I used to think, you know, the, the longer I cry or the, the you know, when I, I'm so, you know, solemn and uh, emotionally, you know, then God hears my prayer. Not, beloved, no, 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 no. God is not about emotions. God is about understanding who he is and what he's put in place. Are you listening? Yes. Because your emotions does not change what God has already put in place. Your tears. I'm not to say I'm not saying that don't be emotionally or don't cry. No, but your inability to understand who you are, where God is concerned, is 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 allowing somebody else to take advantage over that which belongs to you. Are you listening? And so this is where I'm coming from, and I want you to understand that. So we've been talking about the uh, being careful of the Holy Spirit. Um, John says in 1 John chapter 4, to test all spirits, to test all spirits. Do test all spirit. Do not believe every spirit. Don't believe every spirit. You need to test them. Test the spirit to know which spirit is operating. Wherever you are, whether it's, it's your, 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 your job, your job area, whether your family settings, your house, relationship church school market area you must test the spirit how do you test the spirit by the spirit by the holy spirit the only way you can tell that this is not a spirit of god is by having the holy spirit to prompt you that this is not a spirit of god the environment where you are now is that what is happening here this is not the holy spirit it, it would it would take the holy spirit to tell you that so if you don't have the Holy Spirit with you and dwelling in you, how can you tell? So then your emotions come out and you are grabbing everything and you think, oh man, this is it. Because I'm telling you, some people are very, very good. We see in the scripture where, you know, um, somebody like um, Simon the sorcerer, okay? I mean, the people in the town, they believe him. They, they, even, they thought that he, he was a man of God. Some of the, 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 the things he was doing and some of the things he said about people. But that was a familiar spirit that this guy was using. But they didn't know. The people didn't know because the people, they were not in tune with the Holy Spirit. Hey, Rama, God bless you. Are you listening? They were not in tune with the Holy Spirit. And they didn't know nothing. And I'm talking about the New Testament. This is after the cross. All right? And then we see, um, we see where, where, um, uh, Peter, you know, approaching Ananias and asking him, why are you doing this? The church is doing this together in love, selling our possessions and, and all that and bringing it so that the apostles will share, let everybody, you know, there will be so that there will be no lack. There will be no lack. Sometimes I get, I get um, calls. I do get calls from a lot of people who belong to some churches. Okay, I'm not mentioning any name. I mean, if you look at the congregational size, they are even, you know, bigger than my, you know, where I, I, I pastor. But they'll be calling me and, you know, it's like with, with needs. Needs, whether for education, for tuition, uh, for medical, uh, for whatever. And I'm thinking, wait a minute, why are you coming from this quote-unquote, you know, big size church and asking me, for 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 help have you spoken to the shepherd of that church the last one i got there was about two weeks ago you know and now the 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 young lady even got an attitude and i can tell the, that she had an attitude when i asked her have you spoken to um the leader of um you know your your shepherd because you don't you you don't you are not part of my congregation i'm shepherding the people you are coming from somewhere to come and uh, feed 
from me. You have left where you are. You are not part here. So when I was asking her, have you spoken to your pastor about it? She says, no. I said, okay, then talk to your pastor that you need tuition for school. School is about to start and you need tuition. And she had an attitude. Okay, I hear you. But, 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 and then she left. And I'm, I'm thinking, why are you so in that church? Let everybody know that, oh, you belong to this big fat name church, but you are, you are struggling in there, but you are coming to me. What makes you think that I'm the one supposed to be taking care of that need for you? Well, I don't mind doing it. But you see, beloved, I have been doing this thing for years. I have been doing that for years. I mean, I spent about 10 years or so in a, this particular country. You know, and I at least when I left the place, I could look back and, and see about 43 to 47 people that are education, that's, that's education-wise, that I put them in schools. There's about 47 kids. Besides those that I, you know, help them, you know, to start business, give them money to do this or to start this trade or whatever. Yes, but 99.9 but .9 of the people were not part of the ministry where I, I, I was shepherding. 99.9 .9 of the people. But I look back today and say, wait a minute, yes. And by end of the day, where, do, where can I even trace them? Nowhere. It's good, but I was doing good. Meanwhile, there are other people here that I'm supposed to help as well. Are you getting the revelation here? So if you don't understand this, you will just be doing things, you know, in the name of, you know, your emotions are stirred up. Your emotions are stirred up. And you don't, you're, you don't get blessed out of emotions. You get blessed out of understanding. Anything you don't understand cannot bless you. Your emotions, you don't get blessed from emotions. You get blessed from understanding. So you must understand the person of the Holy Spirit and let him walk with you, talk to you, lead you, help you. Remember, Jesus says, I will send you another helper. Another helper. So the Holy Spirit is our helper, is our teacher, is our doctor, is our paraclete, is our advocate, is our master, is our teacher. So the Holy Spirit is our helper. Remember the importance of the Holy Spirit. Jesus told the disciples, don't even think of going to spread the gospel in Jerusalem. Don't even think about that. Wait until the Holy Spirit has come. Because with the Holy Spirit, you'll be able to heal the sick. You'll be able to raise the dead. You'll be able to see who is lying to you. You'll be able to decide. I mean, the Holy Spirit will, will so open you up that you will not, you, you, because you see, you'll be, you'll be among wolves who are dressed in sheep clothes and without the Holy Spirit, you will never be able to discern that. The Holy Spirit will give you discernment. Beloved, people are talking very good, good talk. People are talking very nice. People are using, I mean, using all kinds of stuff to give you to 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 trigger your emotions and by end of the day do you realize that your problem is still the same do you realize that you have not even make um, you know just you know one move oh don't don't get it this tw twisted beloved satan also do miracles yes satan also do miracles and so it's very important that we understand this. Yesterday, we, we look at the scripture that um, a false prophet, okay, false prophet was, was engaged in the life of, um, of uh, a politician. Let me put it this way. Bible calls it a proconsul. A proconsul is like a governor of a, of a district. And that was the, in the old uh, the Roman um, um, uh, times. A proconsul and this proconsul was with a false prophet prophet false prophet how do you know he's a pro false prophet the proconsul didn't know 
The governor didn't know. The minister of state didn't know that this was a pro false prophet. But the guy, I believe, goes to this guy, this uh, politicians all the time, probably just, <clears throat> you know, prayer, prayer, and all that. And the scripture says that the proconsul head uh, of Paul and uh, requested for Paul to come and talk to him about the word of God. When Paul and, and, uh, and Barnabas came, they saw this false prophet with the proconsul, the governor, the minister of state. Just put it anywhere you want. And he was trying to, you know, just, just have a confrontation with, with them. Because he was having an evil spirit contrary to the spirit of the Holy Spirit. And the Bible says that Paul looked straight into his eyes and chastised him. And told him that you are going to be blind because you have been doing some wrong things. You know, this man has a desire to know God, and you are using divinational spirit, divination spirit, bad spirit to lead him into wrong area. And beloved, there's a lot of that going on right now. Right now. Yesterday I asked you a question: which pastor is talking to you? Have you tested the spirit of that individual? Because scripture tells you to test all spirit. What do you have to test the spirit? The Holy Spirit. You can use any other method or, or measurement to test any to test the spirit. What you need to test this any spirit is the Holy Spirit. So you, you see, without the Holy Spirit, beloved, you are boxed in into where they are leading you to. I am not here to condemn nobody. I am here to bring you the word of God based on the fact that now that we are in this dispensation of grace, after the cross, we have been given a promise in the person of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is here now to help us in every area of our lives. So we can no longer be ignorant of where we used to be. We are now in... Okay, we become heirs and joined heirs with Christ. How do we become joint heirs with Christ in ignorance? So this is a platform to bring you information, to revive your spiritual thinking, to bring you to that place. I know that most of most of the time when I'm you know I'm, I, you, you know I don't see this thumbs up like all those good stuff and all that. I understand because I used to wonder and I asked Joyce like why do Sometimes I'm, you know, people that said, oh yeah, because they, anyway, I understand. Because see, this ministry brings you information and inspire you to live a life with, of understanding. A life of understanding. Oh, look at, look at you, look at you, look at you, shame on you. <laughs> oh, wow. Alison, Alison is giving me all the, uh, the like stuff I'm seeing. And God bless you, love you too. <laughs> It's all good. It's all good. But listen, the important thing here is, by the time I, I finish with you on this, on this platform, my prayer is that you know the Holy Spirit and walking and living with the Holy Spirit. Because, beloved, that is what we have. This is what God has. For God so loved the world that He gave. God loves you so much, beloved. He loves us. That he hasn't left us for us to be, you know, seeking the things concerning us. I mean, most, most people, and I've been there before. See, I'm talking to you, not something that I read about. I've been there before. Letting somebody tells me about what's going on, you know, because I was having some problems. You know, so what's going on? And, 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 and it, what makes you think that anybody knows anything about you? And not, and, and, and not the Holy Spirit. What makes you think that? Yet, yet, the Bible, your Bible tells you that only the Holy Spirit. It says, eyes have not seen, eyes, no ears have heard. It has not even entered into the heart of any man or woman the things that God has prepared for those who love him. And for those who he, God, has called according to his purpose. And 
it is it is the only Holy it is only the Holy Spirit who knows the things of God, even the deep things of God, the Holy Spirit, and it is the Holy Spirit who reveals the things of God to you and to me. So if we don't have the Holy Spirit to tell us, talk to us, for us to talk to Him, and all that, you know, last night I was going to sleep. And uh, I didn't sleep early last night because, uh, you know, um, I'm not going to tell you. Ah, you almost got me to tell you stuff. I won't tell you. Anyway, but uh, when, I, when I put myself on the bed, uh, all I said was, Holy Spirit, just reveal this ABC things to me. Just reveal it. Beloved, he did. He did. And uh, I'm sitting down here having an understanding about something. It's amazing. Beloved, I'm telling you, it's amazing. Walk with the Holy Spirit. Inv if you don't know you have the Holy Spirit, invite him. Yes, you prob you probably been baptized in water hundred times. Most, most, most of us, we were baptized so many times. Every time, you know, we were baptized... We you know, you go to this uh, you, you, uh, church, they baptize you, you go to this. We've been baptized so many times. But listen, baptism of the Holy Spirit is one time. One. You can be baptized in water so many times. <laughs> but baptism, all right? If it wasn't the Holy Spirit, if I didn't have understanding about, the, about who the Holy Spirit is to me what I was thinking of. I would have called somebody in in the in the old in the in the days past. That's what I would have done. I would have probably called somebody whom I I knew then or thought was the only the person who hears from God. <laughs> All right, because I haven't come to have that understanding, and then I'll be asking, "Oh, so what do you?" What, what, what's going on and all that. And, and most, when I take an inventory today, beloved, when I take an inventory today, I realize that none of the times or the people that I spend resources, time and energy and all that with, whatever they said or did, I have never even seen one come to pass. Not one. And beloved, I, I'm looking young and handsome, but I'm I'm not I'm not young. I'm not young. I've been in ministry, in the pulpit since I started preaching, about 20 years. I've been preaching for about 20 years. I've been I've about 25 years. I've been preaching for about 25 years. I've been in the pulpit about 20 years. I am not a kid, and I have seen. I look back and I see, I said, my goodness, how much, I mean, ignorance is very expensive. If I look at the monies that I've spent in, in, in some foolishness as a result of ignorance, my goodness, that could have bought, built me a house, another house. Are you listening to me? And so, so I look back and I said, Lord, have mercy. So, beloved, you have the opportunity. I don't know, maybe you have been in the same shoes that I was. But you have the opportunity to get hold of the Holy Spirit and don't waste any more of your time. I am not trying to say that none of the fivefold ministry works. If God didn't think that the fivefold ministry was effective, for us, he wouldn't have put it in place. However, because it's been some of the offices has been abused, okay, by all kinds of spirits. Remember, Satan's number one course is to destroy everything and all things of God. Everything and all things of God. So he also imitate some of these offices and he has come in through flesh and blood okay to get the ignorance of god's people mess them up are you are you getting what i'm saying to you 
Now you realize that I, I haven't quote uh, maybe even maybe one or two just you know scriptures, but I'm speaking to you in the level where I believe you can understand me. That we must be very careful. We must. The times we are living in, beloved, if you don't walk with the Holy Spirit, I don't know what else will get you to fulfill your God's given life. Because all kinds of spirits are also birthing all kinds of stuff. But with the Holy Spirit, you'll be able to know with the Holy Spirit, you'll be able to know. Remember the other day, the scripture says that um, um, there was this young girl who was following, um, is it Paul, I believe? Um, disturbing them, just making noise about, you know, the fact that, uh, oh, these are the, the servants of God who are here to tell us about the salvation and all this and all this and all this and all that. And um, Paul got upset about all that hoopla that was going on, you know, from this girl. Why? Because he was able to perceive that that was an evil spirit making a joke, basically. But you see, if you go deeper, if the Holy Spirit will help you deeper, and that's what he did to me, gave me understanding of what was going on. It wasn't about what all that, that girl was saying was true. They were servants of God. But they were not living in that town. They were passing through. They came there to do you know, God's work. And then, But if this girl, a sorcerer, spirit that is operating through this girl, was able, was was able to identify that this was these were servants of God after they have leave leave that town guess who is going to get the attention that 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 spirit to draw all these people back you see the revelation here so that spirit must was to cast be, be cast out and that's what happened beloved scripture says that in these last days, even the elect, if not careful and spiritually sensitive and discerning, can be swayed. Can be swayed. Just imagine that if these servants of God were not full of the Holy Spirit and they were just, you know, they have a swollen head. You know how easy people can let you, you know, have a big head. When they start calling you, you know, all those uh, emotional names, titles, oh, Papa. <laughs> they do that in Africa, Papa. Oh, Mommy. You know, all this, and they make, they, they'll get you some big swollen head. Uh -huh. If that ha had happened to the servants of God, they would have probably, you know, because see, they are very, very crafty. Very, very crafty. And the enemy is to his assignment is to steal to kill and to destroy and whatever nice way he has to come to do that is what he will do okay that's what he will do very nice a nice crafty way and so all that i'm saying to you is that receive the holy spirit this way you are sensitive to the holy spirit who will lead you and help you in every area of your life a christian without a holy spirit beloved you will you will hear all kinds of messages and if you receive them with your emotions and not the spirit of god you will be misled and i have been there before a pastor are you listening to me a pastor by God's grace listen by God's grace he takes care of me but it's my my responsibility and um, my assignment to bring you an information 
to come and let you know that in this dispensation of grace, you need to make sure that you have received the gift of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is a promise. It was a promise. I mean, God promised us the Holy Spirit. It was a gift. Are you listening? And so we see that even sorceress, sorceress wants the Holy Spirit. I told you about uh, a week or two weeks ago, a young guy called me. He wanted, you know, listening, I believe listening to uh, this series of the Holy Spirit, called me that he wants the Holy Spirit. But I found out, you okay? I found out before I hung up from the phone with him, I found out that he's a Muslim. He's a Muslim. He has not received Jesus as his Lord and Savior. And I, I asked him to, uh, you know, to consider doing that first. He says, thinking about it and he will call me. I haven't heard from him. But you see, the Holy Spirit is attractive. Yes. To even demons. Yes, attractive to demons. All right, some of you, the demons are harassing you because of the Holy Spirit. That is attractive. I remember many years ago in my former church, many years ago, and um, uh, one of the associate pastor was a lady. She's going to be with the Lord. And um, she called me one time and uh, says, Brother Patrick, um, I want to talk to you after church. So I came and I said, um, yeah, what is it? He says, I've been watching you. <laughs> oh, Lord bless your heart. Asala. She said, Brother Patrick, I've been watching you and all the sisters who have been coming to you after church and, you know, and this one. I want to, I, I want to tell you something as a sister. Be very careful because it is not, uh, it's not your six foot two dark and lovely, handsome looking face or the way you smell. They are after the Holy Spirit, which is operating in you. Okay? And you cannot buy the Holy Spirit from any store. And she walked away. Years ago, down the line, I came to understood what she was saying. I came to understood what she was saying. And um, I had to, you know, take a stand. I spoke to, I, sp I spoke to something and that you, you will not function until this and that. But you know something? If I look back and I see that even sorcerers, magicians, are attracted to the Holy Spirit, then how much more you, ladies, some of you who are filled with the Holy Spirit, some of you, you, don't, you, you know you, you, you have the Holy Spirit. All these guys calling you and all this, you know, saying nice things and all that. You, it's about, it's the attraction of the Holy Spirit. See, the anointing draws. The anointing draws. The sorcerers, they were the magicians. They were all, ex, I mean, they were all attracted to the Holy Spirit. Are you listening to me? So when I'm telling, talking to you about the Holy Spirit, if you, and then the scripture says, don't quench the Holy Spirit. Don't grieve the Holy Spirit. He will leave. He will leave. If the Holy Spirit has been cautioning you concerning, concerning men, and how you, you know, or concerning ladies, and how did they die or consent whatever it may be and you keep doing it he's going to just back out back out and um one of the 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 ways also that i see that you may not be hearing from the holy spirit is the fact that the enemy can throw so many things at your path you get so busy, so be unnecessary busy. I used to have an uncle like that. <laughs> the guy is so busy. Even he, he he's even busy when he's asleep. <laughs> he will throw some unnecessary things at your part that you become so busy 
that you don't hear from the Holy Spirit. That also happened to me. And by the end of the day, I lost a lot of money and, and ended up in debt. I lost a lot of money in business and even ended up in debt, financial debt. Because I, I get so, I was, I was so busy of whatever was thrown at my path, thrown in my, on my path, in my, in my path, that's so busy. I get up in the morning, I, I have to go, you know, to the site. I have to, you know, take in, check. So busy, beloved, so busy that I was not hearing from the Holy Spirit. Now, if you see which direction is, is leading you, how would you know which direction the Holy Spirit is leading you? That's another thing. So watch your time. Spend time with the Holy Spirit. Spend time. Are you listening? Spend time with the Holy Spirit. Let him talk to you. You talk to him. Whatever the challenge is, talk to him about it. Be sincere about it. He will help you. Remember, Jesus says, the Holy Spirit is your helper. Now, God bless you. The Holy Spirit is your helper. So if the Holy Spirit is your helper, why don't you talk to him first before you talk to anybody? Why don't you talk to him first before you talk to anybody? You know, another thing that I picked up is most of these people that we talk to, most of the time, we tell them our problem and then they, then they give us an answer that what we, what we need to hear. Do you realize that when you go to the hospital, then you are sick? They don't know exactly what is wrong with you. They got to know that this is the disease or sickness, whatever you are suffering from, based on the, your blood. That your, they take your blood and your blood tells them that I am suffering from this area or I'm lacking this and all that. They don't know. The doctor don't know. But you see, there's a doctor who knows. <laughs> and there's a doctor who knows. There's a doctor who knows. His name is Jesus. Even the demons, they, they, know, they know who he is. Remember that scripture? <clears throat> Yesterday, I, I, um, I, I shared that scripture with you concerning the, um, um, this young boys who were beaten by this devil or say, uh, you know, Satan operating in this, in this guy. You, you see what the, 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 uh, the, the demon says? He says, Jesus, I know. Paul, I know. But who are you? Who are you? Jesus, I know. Paul, I know, but who are you? Who are you? So, most of the time, before you talk to anybody about your problem, just talk to the Holy Spirit. He's with you. Remember, He is your helper. Jesus says, I will send you another helper to help you. Help you with what? Help you to understand what you're going through. Help you to know what is happening to you. Vic, God bless you. Help you to know what is around you. The Holy Spirit will help you to know what is going on. You know, let me, let me share you something. Yesterday, yesterday, I, um, Joyce and I went for a meeting somewhere. And, um, you know, it was so convincing, you know, um, during the meeting, what was, you know, put to us before us and all that when I came back you know it's like okay uh, let I pull my you know my 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 card my debit card and wanted to just go ahead and do this and I didn't get through to that phone call <laughs> uh, I tell you I didn't get through to that phone call we have not actually completed even <laughs> 
spending time with the Holy Spirit. Are you listening to me? I'm confessing this to you. I'm, tell, I'm telling you, this is, this is serious. It's every moment and every day. And it wasn't a lot. And so later, since it didn't go through later, just before, you know, midnight, we were just praying. And, uh, and then Joyce came and says, you know, I think it, at the scale, the scale of 1 to 10, now I, I'll, give, I'll give 5. I said, 5? That's not enough. He said, yeah, because, no, I don't think this, that, 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 that. <laughs> so what I said was, okay, I get it. I think the Holy Spirit helped me not to go forward to make that mistake at this time. Not to say that it's not a good thing, but it's not for this present time. It's not for this dispensation. It's not for this moment. Are you listening? So, so I got it. And I said, thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Beloved, all that I'm saying to you is, it is so, so, so important for you as a Christian, if you call yourself one and you believe you are one because you have accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, then you must, you must be baptized in the Holy Spirit. John the Baptist says, I will baptize you with water. But the one who is coming after me, Jesus, he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. When you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, he will baptize you with, fire, with the Holy Spirit. With the Holy Spirit. You need the Holy Spirit, beloved, because you don't want to be a mere Christian. That is a Christian without power, a Christian without authority, a Christian who cannot discern, a Christian who does not hear from God. Now, the Holy Spirit does not do anything except, like Jesus says, except what he hears. And so the Holy Spirit operates through the word of God. The Holy Spirit operate through the Word of God. Maureen, happy birthday to you again. All right? The Holy Spirit operates through the Word of God. And so, if you are walking with Him, He will lead you through the Word of God. So before you receive your prophecies, before you receive your, your directions, before you receive anything, you must, it, it, whatever it is, it must align or it must line up with the Word of God. If it's not lined up with the Word of God, beloved, and even if it is, just check it, read it, and read it again. Because Satan also misquotes. He, he can quote you the Word. He can quote you the word. Remember he quoted Jesus the word? That Jesus what? You know, the word says, throw, you know, when you throw yourself out on this you know, mountain, you know, God says that he will give his angels charge over you. That was, that was the word, but that was not for that occasion. <laughs> Are you listening to me? That was not. So he can, lay, he can mislead you to messing up yourself even before time. Um, a friend of mine in the, in the ministry, Archbishop, he's, he said this many years ago. He said, the devil can set you up 10, 5, 20 years, 30 years ahead of you before you get there. He can set you up. Beloved, I have come to realize it's true. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. He can set you up before you get there. So if you, are, if you miss walking with the Holy Spirit, 
if you miss walking with the Holy Spirit, if you don't walk with the Holy Spirit, beloved, He will set you up and you will fall in it. I know what I'm talking about. It happens to me. The devil can set you up 20 years ahead of you, five years ahead of you, a, a year, a month ahead of you. If you don't walk with the Holy Spirit for the Holy Spirit to, to speak to you, you will fall in it. As I spoke to you, I told you about my story going to this country for what the, you know, whatever I went there to do in there and the Holy Spirit spoke to this same person I'm talking to you about, a friend of mine, you know, this um, archbishop at the airport. The plane did not leave. Two days, the plane didn't leave because he kept saying, Patrick, this is not. Patrick, this is not. The Holy Spirit, he says, the Holy Spirit, says, finally, he has to even tell me, you are the reason why the, the plane is not leaving. Yet, I did not hear from the Holy Spirit. I wasn't here what the Holy Spirit is saying that I went and years later, 10 years later, setting me, setting me up 10 years ahead of myself, fell into that. And beloved, had it not been for God loving me and by His grace, I, would, I shouldn't be alive today to even talk to you. I should not be alive. The plot was such that it wasn't just to embarrass me. It wasn't just to disgrace me. It wasn't just to mess me. It was just to kill me literally. Literally. Beloved, I'm telling you something. Now, if you want to believe the, the Holy Spirit and walk with Him, that's your choice. You don't want to, that's your choice. But for what I have come to realize and understand, the importance of the Holy Spirit in this dispensation. Listen, I know you are hearing all kinds of messages. You are, you are hearing, like somebody said, the way you want and all that good stuff. But if you don't have the Holy Spirit yourself, if you don't, if the Holy Spirit is not dwelling with you and in you as Jesus promised you, then quickly position yourself for him. Because if not, it sounds good, it looks good, but is it? Is it? I remember I went to an area, you know, looking for an apartment. Oh, the place was nice looking. I mean, in the, in the, in the, <laughs> pictures are so interesting. Eh? They can just, that's, that's what it is. He throws you the picture. Pictures are so, oh, it's a beautiful community, beautiful area. I said, man, I love this place. Went in there, went to the management place and, you know, in order and rented the apartment. Beloved, less than a year, I just couldn't wait to leave that place. <laughs> are you hear what I'm saying? I'm telling you. It looks nice, beautiful and all that. Even forget about the picture. When I went, you know, there, the, 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 the ambience, you know, I mean, no, you know, nice and all that. Oh, but I realized, ooh, really? You get up in the morning and you smelling people smoking weed passing you by. You know, you get up in the morning, uh, you know, cops all over the place. You get, I mean, it's like, oh, Lord. What am I saying to you? Be very careful. Get the Holy Spirit to be with you. I know I'm speaking wisdom to, see, to some of you. Not everybody will receive it. Because not everybody received Jesus. So I'm not going to worry myself about anybody receiving this word. And um, having 20 million people views. It's all good. It's all good. <laughs> Allison, tell your son I say good morning as well. And uh, it's all good. My beloved, by end of the day, without the Holy Spirit, I don't know how long you're going to last. Huh. It's been a week. It's been a week. Let me just give you some scriptures, please, to help you. Please write this down and um, have it as your weekend study. All right? 
we can study. Start from Acts chapter 1. All right, read the book of Acts chapter 1. No, Acts chapter 2. Okay, Acts chapter 2. Acts chapter 2, read the whole thing. Okay, come to uh, John, you know, First John chapter 4, verse 1, read it. Acts chapter 16, 16. Uh, these are all the scriptures we read in the course of the week. It's Friday. And um, I came to uh, just cap it all. We're just talking to you. Without quoting you a lot of scriptures. So look, some of the scriptures we used. All right, go through. Uh, if you go back to the Facebook, all the messages are there. All the messages are there. If you missed anything, because I don't know, maybe it wasn't saved there or something. But uh, now we can't, we, you know, these messages are not even in the YouTube because it takes time to do that. So not all of them are in the YouTube yet. But there are, there are some in the, on the YouTube. Get all these messages. Beloved, find out more about the Holy Spirit. And um, just be sure that you are baptized in the Holy Spirit. Jesus says he will dwell with you and he will be in you. Is he dwelling with you? Is he in you? If not, you need to align yourself up very quick. You need to align yourself up before anybody tells you, anybody prof prophesy to you. You must already have heard from the Holy Spirit. So that which is prophesied to you will be a confirmation. Are you listening? God will not speak to anybody first before you. He, you are the one he wants to talk to. And so you must, you must, you must, you must hear from God. You must hear from God. Are you listening? I love you so, so, so much. Now, this is the only thing you can do anything about it. I said, I love you and you can't do anything about it. <laughs> and that is a, that's the truth. Because that is why I'm bringing you what I know is the truth and fact. In fact. So, get all the scriptures, Acts chapter 2, 32 to 39, all right, read it, Acts chapter 19, 1 to 6, all right, John chapter 1, 29 to 34, read it, Luke chapter 11, um, 10, um, 9 to 10 and 13, Acts chapter 8 and 9, verse 9, Romans chapter 8 and 9, I'm giving you all the scriptures because you have them, and if you don't have them, I just gave them to you, this is all scriptures we have used to make emphasis of who the Holy Spirit is and to be very careful with him. Ananias and Sapphire, they were not careful with the Holy Spirit. They thought they were dealing with men. They didn't know they were dealing with the Holy Spirit and they died. You gotta be very careful. Well, this is where I'm drawing the curtain. I pray that you enjoy your week and don't get too busy. Spend a little time with the Holy Spirit. A little time. A little bit at a time. By studying the word that, I've, that uh, scriptures have given to you. You can also let me hear from you by, you know, messenger. If you need any assistance or anything, any directions in terms of, you know, you don't understand the scripture or, or, or whatever. Please let me hear from you. All right, let me hear from you. You can send me an email, and the email address is icfm2929 at gmail.com. Or you can also send me a um, um, messenger, okay? If you go to Facebook Messenger, you can, you know, some of you have been um, um, contacting me by Messenger, you can do that as well, okay? Until then, until then, if you have not received Jesus as your Lord and Savior, please do that right now. Do that right now. Let me lead you to that and say this prayer with me. Let's do it together. One, go. Say, Lord Jesus, I thank you for hearing this message. Yes, indeed, I am a sinner. And um, I'm sorry. 
but I receive you. I need you and I receive you into my life. Be the Lord and Savior of my life and baptize me in the Holy Spirit. Baptize me in the Holy Spirit so that I may walk with him and he may talk to me and he may help me in fulfilling the purpose for which I have been born. I thank you. In Jesus, your name I pray. Amen. If you pray that prayer, Jesus has, yes, come into your life. You are born again. When we talk about born again, in other words, it means not just becoming somebody like Nicodemus says, can a man go into their mother's womb again and be born? He didn't have that understanding. It's a spiritual birth. Spiritual birth, not a physical one. Not the one that your mother is pregnant and in the ninth month, they, you know, she push you out, you know, and physically you are pulled out of the womb and all that. So this is a spiritual birth. He didn't understand that. Born again is a spiritual birth. You are a spirit. You are a spirit. In the, in the bodily form. And so you need to be in alignment where God is concerned. And then God, who is a spirit, he says that those who worship me, this is the method they should worship me. They should worship me in spirit and in truth. Beloved, you can't worship God in any other way. You can't worship God in any other way. God has given you the method to worship him. He says, they that worship me must worship me in spirit and in truth. If you are worshiping God in the flesh, you are not going to get nothing. You are not even going to hear from him. If you are worshiping him in spirit, by activating your most holy faith, trusting and believing, receiving all that Jesus did for you, oh, you are in the best position. All right? Go to, my, uh, go to the website of this ministry. The website www.patrickquino q u a i n o o ministries ministries dot com. Please, I am not ashamed anymore. I used to be. See, before I didn't used to. I will ask nobody for nothing. Is like all that. But I'm asking you. This ministry need to get this media broadcast software and this equipment so that we can expand this. You see, these days you are not seeing the crawler with all the information and all that on there. There's no space for you to even, you know, interactively, you know, be be involved in the teaching or the preaching of the word. We need to get that. I mean, we want to make it, you know, good. We are living in a technological world now. Let's utilize it and to spread the gospel instantaneously all over, all over the world. All right. So go to the website, please. There's a button you see all there, all this, the home button, the um, uh, this button and all that. You see the one say donate. Please click on it and um, be a support to this ministry. It will help you. It will help us. It will help all of us. Okay? Be a support and share it with your friends. Share, the, share it with your friends, all right? I've, I have I've sent um, uh, a good fund me. I've set up a good fund me and I've sent it to all of you. Please share it with your friends. Share it with your friends as well. Let your friends know. Uh, maybe somebody is even looking for a place to, 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 you know, to make a contribution. All right? They can, they can, through you, they can send a contribution through you or you can send them, you know, that information and they can go to the GoFundMe and be a financial support and, and send a donation so that we'll be able to get this equipment. And to, and to spread the gospel in a wider scale, to reach everywhere, okay? So please do that. If you want to do that by um, just instant, you know, sending your contribution right now, you can also use a cash app. Download, go to the, uh, the app store on your phone, all right, and look for cash app, all right, and download that app. When you download it, it will give you all the instructions. It's a quick way of you know, um, sending, I believe there are other ways, but that is what the, you know, we have with this number, 914-572-9816. And then you'll be able to uh, participate in this um, uh, fundraiser, okay? So please be 
a cheerful giver, not a fearful giver, a cheerful one. If you are afraid, please don't. Don't give. Don't support it. But be a cheerful one and let God see how much you love him by supporting his work. Till I come your way same time, enjoy the weekend. In the meantime also, just turn on your notification button on your Facebook. In case I come on again, you can tap on there with me and let's journey together. I love you and there's nothing you can do about that. All right? <laughs> Until then, I want you to know that you don't have no trouble. All you need is your faith in God. And in all thy getting, get understanding.